The Dateable Podcast is an insider's look into modern dating that the Huffington Post calls one of the top 10 podcasts about love and sex. On each episode, we'll talk to real daters about everything from sex parties to sex droughts, date fails to diaper fetishes, and first moves to first loves. I'm your host, Yue Shu, former dating coach turned dating sociologist. You'll also hear from my co-host and producer, Julie Kraftchik, as we explore this crazy dateable world. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Dateable, a show all about modern dating, where we talk about the whys. (laughs) Why? Why does this happen? Why do people do these things? (laughs) And like, why are we so awesome? No, just kidding. But we already know why. (laughs) Happy uh, Thanksgiving after after Thanksgiving week, I guess you call this. It should be something to celebrate. We made it through a major holiday. We did it. It was a little weird this year, but you know, it came out ahead. This quote I feel like that we put up on Instagram, I feel like captured it oh, so I love that well. Quote. Yes. It was for anyone that did not is not following us on Instagram, if you're not get on there now, but I thought 2020 would be the year I got everything I wanted. Now I know 2020 is the year I appreciate everything I have. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like that really has, like this year has encompassed that a hundred percent. It's a year of reflection and Thanksgiving, no matter how you spent it, I think was a moment of just pausing and reflecting Mm -hmm. back on this crazy ass year and just being grateful for those little moments that probably you you didn't even think about in previous years like this year Mm -hmm. just having the privilege of eating a really great meal made Mm -hmm. me stop in my tracks and think wow I'm very privileged to be able to eat this wonderful meal we did not have turkey we had duck we roasted duck and it was gorgeous and amazing and my mom made lobster tail I mean the whole thing was just absolutely wonderful and being able I should have been at the shoe house (laughs) yeah you should have we planned this for months I was like I want surf and turf and no turkey my mom um is incredible she's an incredible cook but being able to spend the time with my parents we drove down uh my boyfriend and I drove down to LA or to SoCal from NorCal and you know, just having the option to do that was also yeah. just something I was really grateful for. Totally. I mean, I've been really happy that I've been able to get back. I know like it's been a mixed bag with travel this season for mm-hmm. sure. I think going the week before was a very smart move for me. Like I know like not everyone had the luxury to go and take off work or whatever, but I think just seeing like the crowded airports and when I went, there was like very few people in the airports. So I think that was definitely a blessing. Blessing, and then to, you know, not have COVID and be with my, I mean, we, I did a very small gathering this year. It was just my two parent, my mom and dad, and we got food um, from oh, a your restaurant. Your two parents, like I think my two like, parents, just my yeah. two sets of parents. <laughs> <laughs> there's something I haven't told you yet. <laughs> As opposed to, but, you know, my normal one set. I get two this year. But I did I was able to, so I saw my parents. I feel like I've been able to see people in like smaller sets this year. So I saw my parents for Thanksgiving. And then my mom and I did a day trip to see my brother and yeah. my sister-in-law. So we drove uh, three hours to their suburb that they live in to in New York. And my mom was like, you cannot use the bathroom. And I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be... <laughs> what? Because <laughs> she didn't want to stop like at some random thing on the street, <laughs> like in public bathrooms. And I'm like, I don't know if I can make it, but I'll do my bath now. You just <laughs> so, held it for three hours? So yeah, so <laughs> I'm sure this is why everyone's tuning into a dating podcast, but I learned this trick. So this is good for anyone. It's <laughs> a trick? Apparently, when you eat bread, it like curbs your bladder. Oh, it absorbs it. And you get to eat bread. (laughs) It's a win win situation. Exactly. So that was fun. Did that. And then I got to see my aunt and uncle today. And they have this new dog. Cutest doggy. I know. I sent you a photo because he was so cute. His name is Fauci. (laughs) Fauci? No way. It's like that, I don't know if that dog is very smart. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm like, I don't know if I'd want to remember this time forever, but I guess I will be every time I see that dog. Fauci is adorable. I never thought I would say that, but Fauci, Fauci is absolutely adorable. Fauci the man adorable. is adorable also. 
He is a cute man. He's very soft, the dog, that is. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know what's been funny, though, is I've been actually, like, using dating apps while I've been here. And with people in San Francisco still, I'm not, like, trying to, like, get on the apps with people in Boston because I'm only going to be here for, like, a month or so. And I <laughs> I feel like the, someone in our group, Ivy, mentioned this new mm-hmm. term. Holla swiping. Swipe, like, <laughs> Holiday swiping. So, so dead on because I've definitely seen an uptick. But one of the challenges I've had is that I've told some people that I'm in Boston, like we're having a really great conversation and mm-hmm. then I say I'm in Boston and then they just like disappear. No, wait, you're talking to people <laughs> in the Bay Area still. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, you so got I a totally local get it. swipe. I get it. I know, but I don't want a local swipe. I get it, though. I get it, though. I'm trying to just like, you know, do the video, but I, I have talked to some and they have been great and people. It's not all people. It's just like there, there's been a little bit of a trend of some people being like wait like one guy's like oh what are you up to today and i'm like oh i'm in boston he's like peace kind of yeah <laughs> but a little far for me but the, here's the thing though if you are a bay area person in boston for the holidays there's got to be other people in the same situation i always think about this you're never the only person true, in the same in this in this situation in particular do some local swiping you might be able to find someone who is similar to you i have been talking to people that haven't been turned off by it. So I think it's okay. okay, I mean, really in theory, like what is a month, especially right now in COVID times, like where you are in LA, it's back to lockdowns, right? So I feel like San Francisco might be heading there soon. Like it's like realistically, like we might not be meeting up even if we were in the exact same place. (laughs) So you can take it real slow (laughs) for that month. Exactly, exactly. I do think it's crazy that as soon as we got down to LA, they were like, uh, we're closing outdoor dining for three three weeks. I mean, for the I think we were here a few days before they closed everything down. So we ate out every meal. Oh, yeah. You're like, we got to get it in. We got to get it in. Just to take advantage. Just to take advantage. But also such a privilege to be able to eat out. I Mm -hmm. forgot what that felt like. I know. You know, like to not do the dishes, to not have to cook. It's a beautiful feeling. And it's also a time like if you think about all those previous years of Thanksgiving, all the body shaming that uh, media companies do the day after Thanksgiving. It's like, oh, working off that turkey. There's the turkey run. There's like burning off all that food. Uh Uh-uh. This year, no. We haven't had any of that. Just be grateful that you had food with people that you love. Exactly. Well, speaking of body shaming, I feel like that (laughs) that is our topic for today. You know, I feel like this has been, I mean, we have an amazing guest, Erin. This actually all stemmed from our Facebook group. So shout out if you're not in the Facebook group love at the time of Corona definitely join. It is the most happening place on the internet. I'm going to keep plugging it that way because that's what it is. We trademark but that. We had <laughs> we had this post. I think this post went viral within the group, if we could say that. But she put up a post about body image. Like, has anyone else experienced this? And literally, like, I mean, I think this might have been our most t- like commented on post. Like, people were coming out of the woodwork everywhere. Like, men, women, women of all shapes and sizes mm-hmm. you know like it was really just like universal of how much body image um really impacted all of us when it came to dating and that's how she phrased it and she's like hey t- potential podcast topic idea and we were like hey do you yes. want to be at the podcast because <laughs> you just volunteered yourself so it was really great because she had so much experience and you know like we really get into it but some of it it's like comments that people make in passing can really sit with you for a long time and it's it's so crazy like how people can just make these comments and like it rolls off your tongue and it really like eats at people's self-esteem and I've been there myself personally like this has always been a struggle for me in dating and I don't know what the answer is this I'm really hoping Janice our moderator poses this as a question to hear people's but I go back and forth because I'm like on one hand it's like you don't want to let this get in your way you know it's like you're never going to be perfect you want someone to love you for who you are so like keep going like don't let like your weight get in the way of dating or like the way you feel about your body. But then on the other side, if you don't feel good, it's really hard to like want to feel intimate and like want to like put yourself out there in that way. So it's like I struggle with it because I know for myself, like the times that I have taken a step back and like felt better about myself, that's when I do attract people. So it's kind of chicken and egg, but it's also like not ideal just to be sitting in limbo waiting for that like perfect time when you lose like X amount of pounds or you gain X amount of pounds. Like it just doesn't work that way. 
way either. I think sometimes we just forget that our bodies are so different that we can't, mm-hmm. there's like no magic formula that works on my body that will work on someone else's body. This is why I love all this like genetic testing and DNA testing because, you know, like in addition to the podcast, I work in the fitness industry. I've been in this industry for a long time and I'm surrounded by extremely fit people, but everyone's mm-hmm. journey is so different. I can honestly tell you there are some people in this industry who don't need to work out, they, who can eat whatever they want and still right. look extremely cut and fit. And then some people who've struggled their whole life, so their body becomes their trophy because they had to work mm-hmm. so hard. But ultimately, I think it's not about this image. And I think that's a problem with our culture is that we have this image of what an ideal body looks like. It's really about the ideal healthy body for you. Mm-hmm. I think healthy is the key word. I've seen people in the fitness industry who are extremely on healthy, who look yep. like they should be there, you know, they've got like the six pack abs. Do you know what they do to get the six pack abs? They don't eat for a six days straight. They don't even right. drink water just so they don't have any water weight, just so their six six pack can show through. And then there are other people right. in the industry who can eat pasta the night before a competition or whatever. And the next day they have like eight packs. So it's, it's right. um you can see it as un- unfair or you can see it as I just need to think about like, what's the best for me and my body. Right. And I think it is a lot of it is like we say it's about everything, but it is mindset shift. Like I know I'm never going to be like a size zero. So it's like I could be upset about that and let that like deter me from dating and think that there's no one that likes my body shape or I can like embrace who I am. Like you can obviously make your like get in the best shape for yourself or the healthiest for yourself. But at the end of the day, like a lot of it is just your own, like the way you process it. And I think that's really great in this episode too is Mm Erin talks about a lot of the work she did to just come to terms with who she is and like see the beauty of who she is because she truly is a beautiful person and she also as a plug has this amazing podcast called Accidental Badass and a Mm -hmm. lot of this was fueled by like some of the stories she said in this episode is shocking to me like I have not heard of people getting this much like blatant you know like criticism for their body type like it's crazy and just how she's processed this and made it like a positive thing is actually truly admirable. So I'm glad she was able to like funnel that energy into something like this accidental badass podcast. It's just how she like views herself as a whole now. I think this conversation for us, we came to the conclusion that a lot of this body shaming comes from people's insecurities. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't know if this is a controversial topic to bring up or not, but we did have to kick out someone from our Facebook group who did exactly this. There was a um, someone posted something about just, you know, getting over like kind of body image issues when it comes to dating. And this man posted this very inappropriate comment about how, how he said when he felt the most insecure is when he went for women who were plus size or something, right? And then, and that yeah, he felt it was really fucked. It was really fucked up. And how, um, he thinks he thinks that like with people who are more confident that they wouldn't do that. It was really I don't know what he was trying to do like a backhanded compliment. It was definitely very yeah. insulting. And I'm glad we kicked him out of the group. But there are still people who think like that who who right. let them their insecurities drive these thoughts of like, what's the perfect body, right. And I do want to say he was not a dateable listener. He was a friend of someone. So <laughs> while we do encourage friends to come, but also be careful who you invite because your stamp is kind of on them. So sure. yeah, I just want to point that out. We've had no issues with dateable listeners, to be honest. A lot of it's be, been friends. That's been the challenge. And yeah, I think we made an assumption like, oh, your friends represent you. So hopefully uh, we don't have to keep doing that. But you know, we're on it. If something like that happens, like that's not okay. Like that is not a like this poor woman was like coming to just like get yeah, like, to heard. Be and this was not what Right, not what she wanted back. I love that. I love that the group checked him though. They were like, no, nope, oh, yeah. that is not okay. Nope. Does not oh, yeah. fly People in got our group. each other's back. But yeah, this is a great episode though. Super excited to air it. Other announcements that we have quickly before we get into all of this. If you're not in the sounding board yet, you're going to hear us keep bringing this up because it's just so wonderful. And we're so excited. We just ha- got off the call with some great coffee chats. And that is one of the perks if you're in um, one of the tiers. There's a tier for everyone. So you can go to Statable Podcast 
podcast.com slash sounding board and read all about it. But we have an audio series, events, one-on-one coffees with UA and I, but also just an amazing community, like really between us and the community members, you will have your sounding board, these people to really just like, you know, be there for you and not let the douchebaggery get in. (laughs) Yeah, we don't allow douchebags. Although douchebags do have feelings too. I'm sure they have their own sounding board. Let us know if you do find a douchebag (laughs) sounding board. We love to invite them. And we also want to take a moment to thank our sponsor for this episode, Function of Beauty. Uh, Just like body types, there's no one size fits all solution when it comes to hair care. We've all been there where a friend recommends a shampoo they're obsessed with, and then you try it and you're like, I really don't love this. So Function of Beauty is all about changing that mindset that there's no one size fits all. They formulate hair care specifically for you. And how specific? Well, they have over 54 trillion, I don't even know how many zeros that is, uh, possible ingredient combinations to make sure the formula is as unique as you. You know, all you do is take a quiz to tell them about your hair. They determine the right blend of ingredients and they deliver these personalized formulas in this really cute bottle that, Julie, you're very proud of this. What did you call yours? Function of dateable. <laughs> <laughs> and as the internet's top rated customized hair care brand, Function of Beauty has over 40,000 real five-star reviews. So what are you waiting for? Go to functionofbeauty.com slash dateable to take your four-part hair profile quiz and save 20% on your first order. Again, go to functionofbeauty.com slash dateable for 20% off and let them know you heard about them from our show, Dateable. It's functionofbeauty.com slash dateable. Love it. And then our final announcement, you know, unfortunately, our Black Friday Cyber Monday sale is over, but... That doesn't mean that you cannot still buy our incredible merch. I feel like the, you know, like there's a lot, the socially distant yet emotionally available. That line is flying off the shelves. And the quarantine for fuckboys line, I definitely may have ordered myself a (laughs) tank top on that one. (laughs) But we've been loving people sending us like um, even in Instagram stories that you've been purchasing the mugs. And, you know, we took in some like requests to to get the Zooty call line and master dating line. So, you know, like there's a lot of great stuff on there. Like, honestly, like we're super excited about it. The reception has been amazing. We can't wait till you guys start receiving your items. So if you did already buy, definitely post in your Instagram stories or on Instagram about your uh, merch. But if you haven't bought yet, you can go to datablepodcast.com slash shop. And if you're a sounding board member, you get discounts all the time. You don't have to wait till Black Friday, all Cyber Monday. Time. So another reason to join the sounding board. Our merch line is like the progression of a relationship. Like you're, we're just <laughs> starting out. If you're like, oh, I'm sort of committed to these girls, you get a sticker, right? <laughs> and then the next step is like a mug because now every morning when you drink your coffee, you think of us. And then the next step is maybe a fanny pack because you're like, okay, I'm carrying stuff. Like I trust these girls to hold my important items. And then the final step is like the loud sweatshirt. <laughs> you know, yeah, that, quarantine for fuckboys. Quarantine from just fuckboys. loud and clear. That's when you know you Neon have an exclusive pink. relationship. <laughs> you are committed to us. That is how our merch store works. It's the evolution. What is more committed quarantine for fuckboy sweatshirt or DTF mask? I'm not sure. Oh my, (laughs) DTF mask. That's true. If if I saw someone in the DTF mask, I would 100% approach them. People are always asking like, how can people approach me in real life in um, COVID? (laughs) We gave you like 10 different merch lines, socially distant yet emotionally available right there. I may have also added that to my profile too. (laughs) Now we just need a shirt that says COVID negative to go along with a DTF mask, you know, just that double reinforcement might work out well. (laughs) <laughs> just saying. <laughs> and of course, like, obviously, there's so many ways you could support us, you know, by either joining the sounding board or purchasing merch. But also, we totally get that people, you know, are struggling with COVID. So if that's not in the cards with you right now, like, tell a friend. That's another way yes. of like giving back to us. Leave us a good review. We always love the good reviews. That's it helps so much. It helps us get those great guests. So there's other ways to give back to if you've been listening to the show in a, for a long time. And a great episode to tell your friend about would be our last week's episode that was all <laughs> about turbo relationships. People really oh, love this episode. So, good. <laughs> so many people have been in turbo relationships. And we went through we went through this whole story of um, a turbo relationship and came 
through some breakthroughs. I think that was the most important part. Like, how do you learn from these turbo relationships if they don't last that long, but they go so deep and passionate, which is also the inspiration for Would You Rather for the week, which was, um, w- would you We're rather- bring it back. We're bringing, bringing it back, it back people. Yes. <laughs> Every once in a while, we will. <laughs> would you rather be in a passionate, deep, but tumultuous relationship for one month or a stable, caring, yet stagnant relationship for one year. Mm. And uh, there was a lot of discussion in our Facebook group about what the word stagnant means. I yes. thought that was really interesting. People we got had to very pull- <laughs> fixated on this word. <laughs> we had to bring out a definition, but uh, some people were saying like, is stagnant just comfort? is stagnant just um no sex (laughs) is you know like people had their own definitions to me stagnant just means the relationship is not progressing it is Mm -hmm. just at a standstill that changes it a little does it does it change oh okay because i think the stable and caring were the words that people were drawn to for the one year relationship but the stagnant is what that's a wild card so what what is your response? Oh, this is so tough. Because I think like when I thought stagnant originally, I thought it was just like kind of like boring, but not like mm. it was still progressing. Oh, this is tough. I think I'm, I I was originally going to say the opposite. So I'm actually flipping on the fly now that I've gotten some more insider's info here. But I think originally I was like, I'm so done with like that one month one that really mm. like kind of like gets you excited and then fucks you over essentially because you get like you build this like future and like all this stuff and then it doesn't happen. But if we're talking about a stagnant relationship, in theory, you've actually invested more time into it and it's Mm -hmm. not going anywhere. So I think I'm going to actually go with the one month. I I mean, I prefer neither, but if I'm going to waste time, I'd rather waste one month than like a year and like think I have a future that's not going anywhere. Yep. Yep. What would you do? I, so to me, I was in a one year, uh, I was in a two year. Oh, yes. (laughs) stable, caring, yet stagnant relationship. And it was nice, but I didn't learn anything. So I think it just Mm. comes back to what do you want to get out of it? What I learned was I didn't want to be in something like that again. Mm -hmm. So I would choose what you chose is I rather learn as much as I can in one month than learn not have many learnings in one year. But we are totally opposite from the majority. 75% of people said they'd rather be in a one-year stagnant yet caring and stable relationship than the one month. I think it's really, it's a reflection of the times. It is. It's a reflection Mm. of the pandemic where people really wish they had something stable. Mm -hmm. They had a partner. They don't, they don't need that one month like here to here and gone the next day. They're craving that stability. And a lot of people said that I'm craving stability right now. I could see that. I mean, the one month does like there's something that feels so unfinished about it that it Mm. hurts. I think it's like if stagnant wasn't just not going anywhere and it was just not like super exciting, I would have picked the one year and hands down. Yeah. But the idea of it just not going anywhere for so long, like knowing that and opting in is troublesome to me. Yeah. You can argue it either way. Totally. (laughs) And then some, of course, a lot of people said, I'd rather just be single if those are the two choices, of course, but that's not, (laughs) How would you rather works? How many times do I have to tell you guys exactly. this? <laughs> Everyone, it's so funny, people's reactions to you when you post it. They're like, why would you post this? It's like, it's a game of extremes. It's They're like, I'd rather just lock myself in a room by myself and be <laughs> single forever. I'm like, I'm sorry. It was just like, right. <laughs> hypothetical question maybe there should always be a third one of lock yourself and be single forever (laughs) that is a really good idea could be like the like the wild card you know you can always pick that if you really don't want to do it yes or be like kidnapped into a cult (laughs) shout out to ua's ex though who i saw on the street and (laughs) definitely ignored me (laughs) I literally walked right by him and I was like, oh, and then looked away. But maybe he didn't notice me in my mask. So Who knows? Weird. Who knows? How weird is that? I, we've been broken up for almost three years and I've yep. not run into him once. I've and seen Julie's him twice. Run, <laughs> Julie's run into him twice. Okay. In one time, though, I was in an Uber, so he 100% did right. not see me. But this, this time, I literally walked right by him and he looked at me and then looked away. <laughs> 
Yes. Yeah. He definitely saw you Just and recognized saying. you. I love Just how Julie's saying. like, well, I was wearing my, my mask. Maybe he couldn't recognize me. I'm like, no, Julie, he definitely saw you. He recognized you. It's it's not like you're wearing like a, a uniform or whatever. <laughs> Like you didn't just disappear behind nope. your mask. Nope. Well, enough about exes. Let's get to this episode about body image with Aaron. How much has body image played into your dating and relationship life? That's a topic for this episode. And it happens to be one of the most popular topics that was brought up in our Facebook group that Erin, you posted about. Yes. Had hundreds of comments and likes and emoji feedback. What was the most fascinating about that post was we had equal number of women and men who chimed in about how body image impacts all of us, no matter our size, our height, our age, our gender, our ethnicity. I mean, it really doesn't matter because it is one of those things that's so personal that we are all insecure about or we mm-hmm. have some sort of some sort of blocker about. And so I think it's great that we're taking the time to make an episode just out of body image. We previously had a guest on named Natalie who we talked about uh, body image with and she wrote a book called um, Everybody Beautiful. And it's about time. It's been a few years. It's about time we bring it back and really hone into what does it mean to have this relationship with this image of body image and how does it affect your relationship life? Erin, how are you? Are you staying warm in Chicago? (laughs) Yes, I am staying warm. Thankfully, I stocked up on sweaters like every year you have to add five new layers <laughs> um <laughs> yes i'm staying warm. well you're so used to it because you've been in chicago since the age of 13 you're 44 now so basically all of your life you've been in chicago you're pretty much used to the weather and it looks like you're taking a dating sabbatical their narrative that you have in your head is relationships have failed in the past because of your body type Tell us more Mm -hmm. about this narrative and and why do you think it plays out for you like this? So that is a big bag. Lots to unpack on that. I, when I was growing up, my father, you know, I was 12 years old. I remember it vividly. He just unloaded on me some very crappy stuff. And I know now as an adult that was his issues but he would tell me you know if I didn't lose the baby weight I was never going to be lovable no one would love me in those words Um, like that explicit oh that explicit yeah and how old were you when he started saying this so yes I was 12 years old when he started to say that it just stuck in my head and you know then I I got into my 20s met my he's my ex-husband now but met my ex-husband. And even when I was married to him, there came a point in our marriage where he kind of repeated the same thing that my father had repeated. You know, I just, I'm not attracted to you. Um, I don't want to take you places because I find you unattractive. And then he asked for a divorce and that was seven years ago. And so I had it programmed into my head that, hey, because you have a little more meat on your bones, you're a little curvier, a little thicker, that you're unattractive. You're undesirable. You're unattractive. And for the longest time, I mean, we're talking a long, long time, a lot of therapy, a lot of stuff. I believed that the reason why my relationships didn't work out was because my body was unattractive to the men that I went out on a date or dates with. Wow. So I feel like to get that message from that early of age from a male figure, like I definitely feel like growing up, my mom was always like, watch what you eat, blah, blah, blah. But I never like I think having a male figure explicitly say that has definitely got to, you know, get in your head with it. And then you said all the way to your ex-husband, what about in between that? Like, how did this play in with other people you dated along the way? Or were you not dating that much? Yeah, I mean, I I was not a nun, any stretch of the imagination. (laughs) To me, my interpretation, and again, where this narrative 
uh, the programming that I had in my head and the narrative that I had was when I would meet people and, you know, over text, over phone calls, they would say, um, and these could be blind dates, these could be apps, they would say, you're, you're great. Um, oh my gosh, you are, I, you know, I love your energy. You are so awesome. Just all these complimentary things. And then we would meet up or, you know, we, you know, we'd meet up, we'd go out on a date or sometimes a couple of dates and it's like, yeah, yeah. I just, I like you more as a friend. I heard that so many times, even people I met, you know, organically, I have, you know, a list of just the guy friends who are like, oh my God, yeah, you're, you're a great, you're like, you're a great woman. I love having you in my life. And I'm just not attracted to you. And in my head, it's just like, it's because they don't like my body type. Mm. And I can step back from it now and see that that may not have been the case, but I heard it so often, so often. I remember being out with a big group and everyone else was eating. And I think like I wasn't that hungry that night. And a guy that I'd kind of been interested in had made a comment like, oh, finally going on the diet, huh? Oh, you my know? God. Um, yeah. Like, oh, you know, when you lose like 25 pounds, <gasps> like, come, like, come find me because I will totally <gasps> fuck you. And it was just like one of those like and that was probably a couple of years ago. And it's just oh like, my God what the fuck? Like, are you fucking kidding me? Um, so yeah. So like when you hear stuff like that, it gutted me for the longest time and made me not want to date. Actually. Mm -hmm. Um, I would take long dating breaks because you hear that repeatedly. Now from the time I was divorced until now, it's been seven years. I've had a handful of longer term relationships in between there. So obviously it's not, it's not every guy I ever went out with, you know, it was still kind of, you got that feeling and it's like, I don't know that I ever questioned what was wrong with me in my head. I, I felt, I knew mm. what was wrong with me was the way I looked and specifically my body type. I can totally relate with your situation of like the guy friend that's always like telling you like how hot every other girl is that in makes it seem like because you're not you don't look like them that makes you not hot but that's more inferring where this is like blatant in your face. Have you had anyone else say stuff like I'm just like so baffled by these. Oh god yeah just I mean I feel like if you can imagine it I've probably heard it. Oh gosh let's see. Your tits are nice, but your but your stomach's too large. Um, someone said that explicitly. Uh huh. Like oh, someone yeah. who were dating, or just some like rando. Like, how, what was the context of it? Um. So there was one. It was summer, wearing a really cute top, a little V neck number, um, and um, some shorts. And yeah, he was just you know kind of. I was with a group of friends, and we were all just kind of hanging out and kind of flirting all with each other and you could tell um he was the one um who wasn't getting hooked up with the rest of the the women in my group and I think it was just his own you know I'm gonna put you down I'm gonna neg you mm -hmm. I'm gonna put you down so I feel a little bit better about myself um so yeah it was just like well, yeah, your tits are hot, but like almost to be like, yeah, I think the top half of you I could do with the body. Like wow. you're just, your proportions aren't enough. Yeah. So Holy it's just, shit. I've developed really thick skin. Um, I mean, no wonder you have this, like this thought goes through your mind. Like it's hard not yeah. to. And that's pretty natural. It's a natural reaction for all of us if we keep hearing the same response about us. Mm -hmm. And then if we keep turning that response into the narrative we have in our head, then in the end, our conclusion is, oh, these didn't work out because of obviously this reason. And it's, I think all of us have been through that. There's just that one thing that, that we were insecure about. And sometimes it could be the type of people you're attracting based on what you're putting out there. I had a conversation with this friend of mine who 
had very similar narrative in her head when she finally took inventory of the men that she was attracted to or Mm -hmm. was attracting. They preyed on women who had insecurities. And if you look at their dating history, they're only dating women with insecurities of all shapes and sizes because that's what makes him feel powerful. That's what makes him feel masculine. But it really fucked up these women. So on one hand, it's how you digest information. On the other hand, is to really look at like the energy you're putting out there and what is sticking to that energy. Yeah, I think a lot of times we're like evidence seekers too, like especially when, especially for women, we're kind of fed this narrative from a really early age. I remember like looking through all the magazines and seeing like, you know, like I remember it was like supermodels and like people that you like looked up to when you were younger. And if you think that you don't look a certain way, you start to think that is what, like that's what all men want or like that's what all people of whoever you're trying to attract want. And I guess like for you, like, did you have any situations that helped you kind of see like, okay, this might just be a limiting belief that I have? Has anyone ever like told you how much they loved your body, like given you compliments? Um, far fewer. Um, the, the guys that I probably have gone out on several dates, handful of dates, you know, or the ones that I dated more long term, they would. Um, and even that was kind of framed in the, I love your squishy parts, which I've just come to Mm. like, it's what I have. I don't, you know, I have squishy parts. I own it. My body type and configuration is either not something that ever comes up in the conversation. It's never the center of attention. I have great friends. I have great friendships and have had relationships where, my body has nothing to do with anything you know it's my my brain my you know my wit my my sense of humor that what attracts people whether it comes to my dating life or even friendships and I think that reminds me maybe in the past had I I felt was judging me just on the way I looked it's like well the majority of people you know friends the male friends, female friends, the relationships, the people I did date for maybe a couple of months and things didn't, that didn't work out because of timing. It's like that helped me confirm that, well, hey, wait a minute. The reason why this didn't work out had nothing to do with the way I looked. You know, the reason why this didn't work out is we were too busy or it was just a you know, bad timing, that timing seems to be my biggest issue lately, but probably more recently started to, started to notice that, hey, it's not necessarily the way I look is why something didn't work out. Almost to offset all of that negative, I have developed almost like a hyper sense of self-confidence. Like, knowing that like I am kick ass at a lot of things I do. I excel at everything I put my mind to almost as if in my head to like overcompensate for like, I am cute. Like I believe I am an attractive person, pretty eyes. Um, I, I hear all of the positive stuff to tell. I look at my body in the mirror and I, I do do that practice of, I love you hips. Mm -hmm. I love you boobs. I, you know, I had a lumpectomy four years ago. So I have like a scar on my, on my right breast. And it's like, I look at that. It's like, nope, you're beautiful. You know what? The asymmetry in your boobs. I love you. Um, Hips. I love you too. Thicker legs. I mean, that's amazing. I feel like you have, like, that is, I think that's really what you should be doing. I think that's wonderful that you're doing that. I think a lot of the the negativity has helped feed and give me energy to accomplish things that like I have a second degree black belt in karate oh, that shit. I swear to God, half of it was fueled by just pure anger of, you know, a, a, a father with issues, an ex-husband that was mean. Um I only stopped doing martial arts because I 
had so many injury, like joint deterioration um, because I pushed so hard so fast. So um, a, when I said the big bag of stuff to unpack, <laughs> um, um, kind of a different layer to this too was said father who kind of said the unkind things. Um, he actually died earlier, um, about a year ago. It was very sudden. It was very shocking. Well, it was sudden to me. I didn't know he was sick. It kind of broke me open, for lack of a better word, um, because it's someone who had an estranged relationship with for the last year and a half. Didn't get to say goodbye. Mm. How his death was handled was very mysterious and still a lot of questions. And I bring all of that up because the lack of closure, the lack of getting to say goodbye, just the general lack of anything with this man who had such an impact just made me so sad. Like I, I had a hard time with the grief mm -hmm. process. Very early on in the year, sought out counseling. Um, I've seen therapists for most of my adult life for various issues. But early on in the year, I that was something that I knew I wanted to get a hold of mm -hmm. and and deal with my grief appropriately. And a constant theme that came up was throughout my whole life, not just dating, but that I'm not mm. enough, that I'm not pretty enough, I'm not this enough, I'm not that enough. It, one of the things that came up within that was the the how I look and the dating aspect. And my therapist, very wise, you know, pointed out there are plenty of women your size, larger, thinner, what have you, that have very loving relationships. And to work on, don't always isolate that that is the reason why. Don't focus so hard that that is the reason why. So I have tried very hard and I, I call it deprogramming my head because it, for, you know, 30-something years, really felt to me that the reason why things didn't happen in my life was because of how I looked, because I was a punkier girl, woman. And so that's been a huge part of it, is working on kind of removing that that narrative, that programming in my brain that right. said, like, yeah, it's there were other factors at play. None of them had anything to do with you, Aaron. <laughs> it was probably the other person. And right. you need to give ownership back to that person mm -hmm. for why it wasn't time. Don't own the reason. Um, give it back to them. And don't automatically default to, oh, woe is me. They think I'm ugly and that's why. Okay, let's pause right there because we have a big announcement from us. Let's face it, it's a weird time to be dating or developing relationships. Have you recently decided that you want to make some changes to your love life? Maybe you've recently re-entered the dating scene. Maybe you've gone on one too many dates that went nowhere. Or maybe you're ready to take your current relationship to the next level. That is exactly why we created The Sounding Board, a true extension of our podcast that delivers a personalized experience, which includes one-on-one -on -one coffee dates with us, a monthly dateable live after show, exclusive audio content, and much more. Allow Julie and I become your dating Sherpas to provide real-time guidance and wisdom in a more intimate way so we can navigate dating and relationships together. Join the sounding board today by going to datablepodcast.com slash sounding board. Again, that's datablepodcast.com slash sounding board. Okay, let's get back into this convo. I think also, like, I mean, I even f felt it like recently, because I've definitely gained some weight during the quarantine time this year, obviously has not been as active and definitely have turned to some comfort food. And I was like on a date recently. And I admit the thought did cross my mind, like, is he not reaching out because my photos are from when I was, you know, 10 to 15 pounds lighter. And I was like, I can't believe this thought is even going through my mind right now. And I had to like stop and take a step back and think about it. But it did go through my mind. And sometimes it is really hard to untrain ourselves for this type of thing. I think like what you were saying, though, and 
this has helped me in the past too, Erin, like through therapy is like, okay, there are people in all types of shapes and sizes that are in healthy relationships. It is not like only super skinny people can be in relationships or whatever. And I would love your thoughts, Erin, but like seeing in our Facebook group, like on the post you made, pretty much like all women of all sorts of shapes and sizes commented. Like even I think um, Janice, who's our moderator, who does like health coaching, like she was saying that even as like 120 pound, five, six, five, seven woman, she got body shame. Like what was your reaction to seeing that this happens like everyone experiences it in some shape or form yes the response in that facebook group to that post it was eye-opening and refreshing almost gratifying to see wait a minute i'm not the only one i mean i figured i wasn't going to be the only one who you know maybe put thought behind how body image would impact my dating life but to see the varied responses how hair is styled what their body is like what they've been shamed for being too thin or perceived to be too thin and that's the women once some of the men started to hop aboard the conversation it opened up a whole new just right. way of looking at things and the way you know men have tended to be judged women will say oh i won't date a guy under whatever i'm 5 4 so my my height requirement is <laughs> you know Six feet, though, <laughs> is usually the, the deal yeah, breaker. Yeah, I was say, I'm like, my, it's still unreasonable. <laughs> it's still unreasonable. And, or he's too hairy. Or he doesn't have enough hair. Hearing men chime into this conversation, because this isn't just a female issue. Body image isn't just related to women. By the time, you know, we had kind of wrapped up the conversation within that particular post, we all came to the conclusion that, hey, don't be a judgmental ass when, <laughs> you're, when you're dating because right. everyone is dealing with some kind of insecurity. Everyone. Yeah. And it's like, this is the part I don't understand. There's no alignment in what people say their preferences are and their own um, shortcomings. So, we, you know, we have all these matchmaker friends who say, well, my clients are so unreasonable because they may not be everything that they require their partner to be. I want my partner to be athletic and I want her to have 34 double Ds and I want her to have a PhD. But at the same time, I'm not working on these things myself. Right. So that's another way of looking at body image and just personal image that is just like we, we keep casting other people. Like this is what I think. This is the movie we're all in and we're casting characters. And at the same time, we're casting ourselves into these roles that aren't fit for us. And it goes into like this conversation again, Erin, you brought up hair. This is a, a huge discussion in the Hollywood world where actresses would change their hair color and then all of a sudden they'd be cast as a leading lady because that is what a leading lady looks like. I'm curious, you've done some experiments with your hair. What have you found? I, I have. So I had fiery red ginger lock for about four and a half, five years up until this February. And I loved my red hair. It just seemed to match my personality, you know, fun, fiery, just fun. Mm -hmm. And I loved it. But I felt like I got so much negative attention. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got great positive attention when I would be out on the street or shopping or, or out at a bar back in, you know, back when you could be at a bar. <laughs> I, I would get random strangers, mostly women, walking up to me and telling me how much they loved my hair. And that was nice. It's very affirming. But then I would also get negative attention from men. This went on for years, the, almost from the day that I walked out of the salon the first time. And I think when I first converted to you know, the red hair, I know now I probably needed that, that extra boost. I needed that little shock of, of confidence, that extra pep in my step and probably needed a little bit more of that. Hey, I want the attention. I'm going to be a redhead now. So I did it four and a half, five years. And I received a comment on 
New Year's Eve, the comet was some, you know, some guy had been flirting with me all night. It was nice. You know, I was there with a bunch of friends and the guy was getting progressively drunker and almost immediately after the stroke of midnight, he went up to kiss me, you know, for New Year's and, you know, I let him peck on the cheek and I kind of pushed him away and he comes back with, um, oh, come on, don't be a tease. Come on, come back to my hotel room with me. I've always wanted to know what it would feel like to fuck a fiery redhead. Come on, come on. Ooh. And he's like, and so when I'm like, excuse me, back off. He's like, come on, you ginger bitch. Oh my come god, on and suck my yeah. And I won't, I won't fill out the rest. Use your imaginations, <laughs> but that became a defining moment for me. Uh, you know, I'm not so sure that this red hair is working in my favor anymore. And I started to wonder and actually researched a little bit searches on red hair and its impact, you know, dyed red hair on its impact of dating and perceptions people had. And then I also look like from a professional standpoint, because I also heard some things professionally that I was constantly referred to as just the firecracker at work, you know, the wild firecracker at work. <laughs> and once I I came to this decision that, you know, I had a hair appointment coming up in February, I was going to see, can we throw like a, a brunette rinse over the red? What would that look like? And so the guy who does my hair, we did it and it looked really cool. And I remember going out to a bar, meeting my friends that night and some people didn't recognize me and, you know, my whole family, because I went home that weekend for something for my family. And they're like, oh, my God, I love it. You look like such a different person mm -hmm. for because that was probably a month before, you know, things started to shut down when people did see me. Even people who have known me for years, even coworkers, had made the comment that I now suddenly looked so friendly mm. and approachable and mm. nice and sweet. And nothing else changed except for your and hair. And nothing else changed about me but my hair color. I, and I will say, I have stuck with the brown hair. I love it so much now. It feels more me than the red hair did. And over the summer, and into fall, when I have been on dating apps, I have seen some guys that I matched with before. And there were a couple of guys who I'd actually met off of dating apps. Mm -hmm. So I rematched with a couple of these guys had made comments, seeing me with the dark hair, the brown hair, saying like, what happened? What happened to the red hair? You were so fuckable with the red hair. Oh my god! Now you're now you're just blah. Oh, and so now the hair color and I I remember at the time my belief and now I stand by this even more is changing my hair color. Basically, I I do blend in more. I I, I do with my brown hair. I don't stand out as much as I did with the red hair. But now I I thankfully people I have to talk and exchange and communicate and I'm not just sticking out with the red hair and people are making assumptions about me it's here let's have a conversation let's communicate so yeah it's been very from it, it's been very eye-opening just to change my hair color so I had a therapy zoom and it's the first time my therapist had seen me with my haircut because you know, I, I've lost track of time on hair stuff. Um, she's like, you're absolutely glowing. Like that haircut mm -hmm. and something that I was so freaked out about when I got, I'm like, oh my God, it's good. It's going to make my face look so pudgy and blah, 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 blah. And like when I've gone into the office, when I saw my therapist, she's like, no, you're glowing. Like yeah. that is the hair. And it's just one of those like, you know what? I feel like I am. Like I finally, mm -hmm. I think like what quarantine did was made me focus on all of mm. these things, all of the stuff I needed to unpack mm. and find peace with. And just like, yes, yeah, yeah, this is, you know what? I'm not going to let all this other stuff that's been cluttering my brain for uh, like all the, all the crap I'd heard mm -hmm. clutter my brain so much and just, yeah. It's very I chic. love that. Very yeah. chic. I love that. Cause I feel like sometimes too, like you think like, oh, I need to lose like, 
10 pounds, I need to lose 15 pounds, but sometimes it's just the mindset reshift. Yeah. Is exactly what you're saying that you feel confident. You yeah. Feel yeah. And I think the thing that um, people, when people dole out the negativity, I think what I found that what shocks most people is how I come back with like, well, I think I'm like, that's nice that you think that, but like, I don't. I think mm -hmm. I'm blah, 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 That's blah. Great. And yeah. I'm wondering if, do you think this is more of a generational thing too? Because like, I feel like the way it's at least held me back has been more in my own head that I'm like, oh, I'm not getting as many matches as I probably would if I was like a size two or something. Like that's how I it's played in for me personally. And I, I personally have never had like this much or heard of that much like blatant conversation i know another member of our group who's also in her like mid 40s janice mentioned the one that we brought up earlier that like she and men being like oh i only date models like even you at 120 pounds like are too much or whatever like do you think this is a generational thing because i feel like men that are even younger like would never dream to even say something like this at least out loud i don't know what you both think i don't know if it's generational or if there's a certain subset of men in their mid forties that are just assholes, um, and, and no, and I say that because yeah, Janice and I are around the same age, and I will say I've not I I am one of those people who will date outside of like the ten year age range. So you know I've been a cougar and I have been the much younger one in relationships. I have only heard this kind of you know vitriol from men around my age um so in mid 40 and i don't know if it is best guess best guess is they're angry from the marriage that didn't work out and they're pissed off about something this is their way of letting their anger out on women who otherwise did them wrong and i could be wrong i could be completely off base but I, I've only ever heard kind of a, a certain age group of men seem to say this stuff. <laughs> it's like, yeah, like who pissed in your Cheerios, fellas? Because I, it's unnecessary. I think it goes back into the evidence-seeking mindset. I, I do believe there are a lot of really great men in their mid-40s, but it's these men, unfortunately, who stand out. And the more you look for that, the more they appear. We can maybe blame it on the generations, but I would also say these men have gotten this way because they've gotten away with it. That that, that women haven't stopped them or chirped back and said, no, that's not, that's not right. They're, they just keep steamrolling until someone stops them and unfortunately, these men are just, you know, they're kind of like a lost cause if they've they've had this happen to them for decades, you know, that they've gotten away with it. But I'm just floored that you have not been, Aaron, you've not been with someone who celebrates your body the way mm -hmm. that you do. And I think we can do all the self-work we want. We can love ourselves the way we want. But our partners should also celebrate yeah. everything mm -hmm. that is you. I keep thinking of this movie I feel pretty with Amy Schumer. Yeah. You know that movie? And she's, I love that movie mm -hmm. because regardless of how other people see her, she just sees the hottest girl ever yeah. in, in the yeah. mirror. But so she's does like, her partner, you know? Exactly. And she's like confused when other people don't find her attractive. She's like, I, I just don't understand it because in the mirror, I see the hottest thing ever. And that's what the partner should be doing as well. Like the partner should celebrate every inch of you. The reason I say the generational thing, and I still kind of do have this as a hypothesis a little, I agree. It's not every man in their forties. I'm not going to like blanket statement that, but I think this day and age, like what you were saying, you, they got away with it. Like I mm -hmm. think back, like when this behavior starts to fester, I think there's a couple things at play, like the magazines that we were all exposed to back in the day, like Cosmo for Women, like mm -hmm. um, G or what's some of the, the men GQ, ones? GQ, Men's Health. 
Maxim. Maxim. That's the one I was thinking. Yeah, I feel like they just HM Maxim was. I remember I used to read Maxim to like try to get mm-hmm, into a me male too. mindset. Yeah, me too. To like, <laughs> I subscribed. <laughs> but I think yeah, me too. But it was so toxic the way they oh viewed women. So I think that's why I think of like that generation picking this up more just because of what they were exposed to. And I think current mm. day women would not stand for this as much. So if a man said it, like we put up a video, I put one up in our Facebook group that I thought was yes. amazing. It was on TikTok and it was yes. like this guy basically being like, like, how can you tell a woman to like lose weight so they can become more healthy? Yeah. And at first I like rolled my eyes and I was like, oh, what a douchebag. Like, I can't believe he's going to go off on this. And he basically, his message was like, you should go become a doctor like go to medical school for seven years and if that's too difficult shut the fuck up and i think that message is being told to men more now than it was back then and i think that's why i think men in their 20s and like even like early 30s like don't have that mindset as much so i don't know when i remember these websites in the 20 aughts I don't I don't remember them being big in the 20 teens but there's the whole pickup artist yeah, exactly um, the art the art of the neg right on how right. to yeah um yeah, yeah. and I re- and I like to think so men my age you know men in their 40s um and maybe like in the early 50s although I swear I just you know late 30s mostly mid 40s I don't know if it there was just a you know, a lot of men that subscribe to that and still think that it works. And so that's what they're doing. It's just hard to unlearn, right? Like it's like hard hard to unlearn. unlearn. Yeah. Right. Right. And I mean, I will say when I respond back, because I don't think the men that have said things to me, I don't think they expect me to respond back in the way that I normally will. And I, I've actually seen it's it's almost kind of funny. I have friends who love to go to bars or went to bars with me to watch how I would respond to men who would do that kind of thing. Because I will say stuff I don't care um, if I piss you off because you were mean and you were cruel to me. I will respond back and not necessarily in a sweet, gracious, kind, angelic manner. Like I will you know, I'll, I'll say something. And my friends have, you know, there was a time they'd love to just sit at the bar and watch me respond back and just walk away and like, just see the responses on the guy's face, because you can tell the guys don't expect to hear me, you know, telling them something. So besides like fighting off, you know, like, cause I think that's like, obviously it's great that you clap back and you yeah. say stuff, but I don't think that should be on oh, you ultimately, yeah, yeah, right? right? Like, so how would, like, I, you know, I know you talked about it a little earlier that therapy was a big part of gaining that confidence. Like what advice would you have for someone else that's dealing with this? Like how, and you haven't had that positive reinforcement and at least in a very tangible way, like how do you still see yourself in the limelight that you should? You know, that is such a good question because I know for me, you know, I have apologized to my younger self. I've written Mm. myself the younger letter to say, I'm sorry, I wasn't there for you. I tell myself my body every day and I believe it. I truly believe it, that I am a beautiful person inside and out. And for other people who might be struggling with it, I guess that would be my thing is believe it, look at yourself and find all of the beautiful parts inside of you and outside of you. Because I refuse to believe that, you know, we are all beautiful inside and out. And to find that, um, my other thing would be, and this is, this is kind of an external way of looking out, but be an empathetic dater. Mm -hmm. Um, this almost goes back to what, you know, we were talking about earlier that, uh, you know, with the, we look for things that we ourselves don't have. And I know when I, I see conversations about appearance and, you know, apps, and I think that's, it's something that just guts me and makes me feel sad about dating apps is how many people, how appearance-based they are. Mm -hmm. And 
to me, it's, I really do try and look, maybe it's a Pollyanna view of, of things, but I really do try and get a sense of the person and not just their appearance. I think because of how I have been talked to or because of my own things, my need, to, my, my celebrating myself, I, I want to do that to other people and with men out there, celebrate accomplishments, not just the way they look. So mm-hmm. I try to practice empathy. I look at someone like, are you a good person? You know, are you doing stuff to make the world a better place? Or are you just showing up because, hey, I'm hot and I think I'm hot stuff and that's it. <laughs> that's all I have to offer the world. So I try to be that. And I would advise anybody listening to be an empathetic dater. It's, you know, put, put yourself in the shoes of everybody else and recognize that you too have your own flaws. Everybody does. Um, so yeah, I guess to me, for anyone struggling with like, okay, where do I get that confidence? I, I feel like confidence is one of those things you have to fully immerse yourself and you have to believe it. I think that's the one hundred percent. You have to believe that you are the beautiful creature or handsome creature that you are and not just make it lip service. You know, don't just write it on an index card or post it and put it on your mirror. Actually believe it. Yeah, believing believing is the hard part because before you believe in something, you have all these doubts in your mind. So that, I think that's like the mm-hmm. biggest hump to all of this. So just having confidence in general is truly believing. But I think step number one is being mm-hmm. open to believing that you are this beautiful creature. Just being open to the I, the idea of it. I think something you said, and both of you, um, when you're bringing up the generational topic earlier, just made me think of this takeaway, which is like, I think we have to Mm -hmm. practice what we preach. And we are all each other's consequences. I think a lot of these men were probably bullied or they have these insecurities that were brought out by someone else, and they feel the need to make other people feel small. So we're all each other's consequences. And mm-hmm. it's unfortunate. Your favorite quote. My favorite quote that I think <laughs> I made up because I can't find the source. Uh, <laughs> but also this idea of we got to practice what, what we preach. And I say this because I think generationally, why we see this with men in their 40s and older is that they grew up with this pageant culture where there mm-hmm. was Miss America, Miss USA, and it's a bunch of women strutting around for men to comment, to comment about their bodies and their hair and their makeup. But at the end of the day, it's like we are not out there for other people to comment on us. Like I am not for you to my body is not out here for you to judge. But because of media, it made it feel like men were in control of commenting on women's looks. And then if you look at current day, these are co-ed pageants Mm -hmm. that we are on, right? Like if you look through any app as you're swiping through you're swiping through a pageant and you're commenting on everything based on their looks and their profile. So I think that before we can be confident and also, you know, be with a partner who celebrates us, we also have to be less judgmental of other people. Mm -hmm. If you find yourself in the thought of, oh, I'm judging this person's height, I'm judging this person's looks or what, what they're wearing, at least stop yourself there and recognize that you're doing that because we're just so accustomed to doing that nowadays. And it's unfortunate because we don't want other people to do that to us. So we shouldn't do that to other people too. Totally. I was going to say a similar takeaway. So I guess we're all in takeaways now. But I think the other one I had is the flip side of that is like, I find it really unfortunate that someone hasn't celebrated your body fully. And I think we (laughs) really no, like, I really do. I think like people really should be saying stuff to people because you just never know, like, like when you say a comment that stings someone, you never know how it's going to affect them. But also when you give a comment that praises them, you never know like the impact that it will make. Like I know for myself, like that, I'm not saying that your whole 
fulfillment needs to come from other people. Oh yeah. But yeah. hearing it yeah. does like put the people that haven't felt that way. You're like, okay, I don't need to appeal to every last person. Like there's some people that find me attractive, and that's all that I really need is I just need someone that you know truly sees me for who I am and loves what they're seeing. So I think that is really important that as we're all dating is to compliment our partners, like、yeah. in whatever way, because you just don't know what people's insecurities are, and like until. Especially until you get to that deep place with someone that you're willing to share them, the early stages that could really make or break how someone, how they feel about themselves, and also how they feel about you. So I think that's one of my major takeaways.、Mm-hmm. And then the other side is this stuff takes time. Like I even. I feel like I've come to terms with this stuff, but it still creeps up as well. Like especially, I know I'm when I gain a couple pounds, like I'm not feeling my best, and I need to remember that I've had so many conversations with friends too that are like, "Oh my god, I've gained like 15 pounds. I feel uncomfortable," or 10 pounds. I can't believe it, and I'm like, I don't even notice on you, but I、mm-hmm. get it. Like. As yourself, I think it's like that line of like. I think someone in the Facebook group said like, "I I go on this line of like, love me the way I am versus like, should I lose a little weight to be healthier?" And I don't think anyone should ever tell you to lose weight unless they're a doctor, of course, and you're seeking out their professional advice, like that guy from TikTok said. <laughs> But I think if you feel better about yourself, then that confidence is easier to have. So I don't think it should just be like、uh, kind of an excuse to just do whatever either. Like I know for myself, like I do feel better when I'm healthy and I'm in a good place. But I also think that it's okay if you have setbacks. Like sometimes. Right. The whole package of who you are, and also the future, like the evolution of who Julie will become, who Aaron will become, who Yue will become. For me, like I struggle so much with aging right now. I'm about to hit forty next year, and I feel everything changing from my hair to my skin to my body to muscle aches, and I'm insecure about the things that like that are that are. That used to be so easy for me in my twenties and thirties,、mm. and I see that it is so not easy for me anymore. But I appreciate the fact that my partner can can celebrate my evolution and say, "I love the gray hairs that you're getting. I love that you don't look like <laughs>、yeah. a twenty five year old. I didn't want to date a twenty five year old." So it's just like the partner has to celebrate who you are today, but also know. Also celebrate who you are tomorrow and celebrate all the decisions that you make for yourself, not the decisions they make for you. Right, and everyone I've learned along the ways, everyone has an insecurity. Oh yeah, it shows up in different ways, and I think I'm not saying that it's ever great to hear someone's like fails with dating and relationships, but what I've heard along the way is it's people that you know are like what you think of as the person that has it super easy because of the way they look. They don't have it super easy all the time, and I think it does put into perspective that. You know, like p- humans are humans at the end of the day, and some people are going to be attracted to you, some people aren't, and it doesn't mean that you know, like everyone's attracted to everyone, and everyone's going to experience some people thinking they're the hottest thing, and some people not. Right, right. I'm definitely accepting applications for if anyone wants to swing on by my Instagram and you know Facebook and tell me that you know I'm cute. You know I'm. Single, I'm single and I'm cute. No, um, yeah, yeah. No, no, and like, and I, I, I do. When my friends, when you know, even my family and friends say, like, you know, you are a beautiful soul. You're a beautiful person. Like, I do actually hear that.、Um, And you're freaking gorgeous, just for the record. And I was sh- when I heard you say this stuff, I was shocked because, like, when I look at you, I don't see any of that stuff. So I think culturally, we need to do so many systemic 
changes in our beliefs and in how we speak to each other as women too. I always think back to that scene from Mean Girls where they're sitting uh, at the lunch table and Regina's like, I feel fat. And then she's like (laughs) looking on the table asking for other people to tell their insecurities. And one Gretchen, I think, had no insecurity. She just had to make one up just to fit in. <laughs> and I think that's just like how we talk to each other is we almost talk about insecurities as a way to bond. Why don't we flip that? I mean, we, what if we started conversations with, my ass looks amazing today, right? <laughs> like, let's just start, <laughs> lunch, start brunch that way. Like, my hair is looking so good right now. Like, we just need to just turn it positively and celebrate each other more too. Totally. And I think like, I I really do hope men are listening to this because I think I've also taken away that I need to be a lot more conscious of men's insecurities. Like I know we'll make jokes all the time about height, but that can really sting people. Mm -hmm. You know, like if there is a joke about height, like people making that subconsciously. And like every time a woman says, I only date someone that's like 5'11 plus, like anyone that's under 5'11, like you know that they're feeling down about themselves. So I think we need to really stop saying this stuff like women cannot be upset that men have weight complexes when we have height complexes Mm -hmm. like it needs to go both directions like talked about this on one of our intros like a couple weeks ago about how a guy led with the height and Mm -hmm. I think that's very different than like just being a certain height and like some guy like commented in YouTube that was like women should have to put their weight on profiles and it's like no men and we actually shouldn't have heights on the profile either like really both of those should be gone like why does that exist but point we've had of having empathy for the other person and then I think like I mean the best relationships I've been in is when I can like openly talk about this stuff with my partner Mm -hmm. and I think like that is the ideal of where we go like what you were saying to you a like someone that you know like not just hears you but loves you for what you're going through but someone you can also vent to about your insecurities Mm. like I think that's okay because it makes you it makes it open for them to also do the same because you know everyone has them amen amen to that that's right (laughs) any other takeaways I, just, I think the other thing is, like, if you don't have something nice to say, just don't say it. Like, why? <laughs> why do that? Like, how is that helping in any way? I mean, it's just making yourself feel better, but, like, make yourself feel better in another way. Yeah. And let's keep keep each other in check, too. If you find that your friends are commenting about someone, a, a, someone that's just totally inappropriate tell them to stop say them, yeah. tell oh, them yeah. it's not appropriate because even if they're if it's not to your face it's still like the energy is out there totally. and someone like subconsciously feels it so and you're perpetuating that culture exactly exactly so yeah hopefully by the next generation gen z is like what i've never had anyone talk about my looks i don't care what i look like that's my wish <laughs> okay so this is just a very quick anecdote but i was speaking to a group of boys like a few few days ago and because they were on dating apps and they wanted my opinion and all of them are in their like mid to late 30s and all of them are scrolling at girls who are 22 to 25 and my question to them very innocently i was like why this age range wait how old are the boys mid to late 30s okay when you said boys i thought you meant like 18 oh yeah sorry. for a second i was like why are you talking to boys okay i was talking to men who were in their <laughs> mid to late 30s only scrolling through girls who were in their early to mid 20s and i and i asked them why they were doing this and one of them kind of had to hesitate and think about it and he said well, isn't that what we're supposed to do? Is that we're supposed to scroll for girls who are 10 years younger? Isn't that like the the social norm? <laughs> and I had to just be like, hold up. Why is that the social norm? And keep on peeling back the layers on why that's such a rooted image in their head. But I think it goes into this body image thing too is when people scroll for let's say people who are only skinny like you have to just ask Mm -hmm. what is it in your head that makes you feel like that's what you should be looking for why is that is that rooted from your own personal interests or just like you feel 
like that's what society wants you to do. Aren't there studies that like there's higher like porn people look up porn of heavier women yes. more than thinner women? Yeah. Ooh, there's I've a heard lot that of those studies. Yeah. yeah. And it's like there's almost something like you're not supposed to do this in real society, <gasps> but I can do it behind the screen. And that means that their preference probably is actually for a fuller figure woman. So Ooh. interesting anecdote that hopefully my mom isn't listening. Well, Sorry, mom. <laughs> she listened to Dateable. Um, <laughs> and if she does, she is a cool if ass she mom. Does, well, she actually, this episode, she probably would just because it's me. Um, <laughs> but no, so to that point, I definitely have had a, several, more than a handful of invitations to have that friends with benefits kind of situationship mm. because it, it almost speaks to that, you know, I find oh, you attractive yeah. enough to want to sleep with, but not to be seen with publicly. Mm. And have you watched the show Shrill? Have you watched I that have. TV I show? love that show. I it love totally that show. reminds mm. me of that. Remember he like made her like climb out the, yep. be- the back yep. door. Yeah. It's the, the porn thing. I've definitely heard that statistic too, that it's like, it's almost, it's okay. This is, I'm what you actually want, you know, physically, but you know, won't admit to your friends kind of thing. And to that, I just, you know, I think back in the day when I wanted that kind of attention, it's like, oh, this feels flattering. And then I woke up and realized, no, that's not flattering. But um, yeah. Well, hopefully men will have the confidence too to just, you know, be like good with what they're attracted to, not just like I need to fit this stereotype or I'll be made fun of. Like that is a terrible, terrible image that we have. Yeah. My last takeaway is to celebrate all kinds of bodies and celebrate your own body Mm -hmm. that, Mm -hmm. you know, I'm the only person I know who actually celebrates the wrinkles on my face because to me, you know, I look at it it's like, well, that's because I laugh a lot. I have laugh lines because I mm. laugh a lot or I have wrinkles around my eyes because I, I laugh. Um, life has thrown me a lot of crap and I still laugh or, you know, again, I have, I look and I celebrate all of those things. And I look at other people's bodies, you know, or help, my friends help people you know random person in the store it's like nope you are a gorgeous creature uh and like and celebrate other people that concept might seem or sound foreign or hokey to some people but i think i don't think we do it enough whether we're wanting to date them or they're just random strangers i feel like we need to do more of gift that random person trying on a shoe or a shirt (laughs) that compliment and tell them how cool it looks whether it's a man or a woman because you know i think as we've said you have no idea what someone's going through and how much just that small compliment or even if you're matching on an app with someone if you see a shirt or something on someone on an app and you just want to swipe to say you know what you have gorgeous eyes yeah that's that's a great color on you that's such an easy line it goes a long way yeah Yeah. you know to bring it full circle from the very start is when we were talking about our last guest where we did this topic natalie carry the every the author of everybody beautiful she made a comment that stuck with me that it's like it's to your point about celebrating your body and loving it it's that you know like your body is like your power horse like this is what's getting you through like be happy that you can walk down the street like be thankful for like what your body is giving you instead of just like being upset by it the whole time so Mm. i you know what i remember about that episode too is that she did pull right Yep. Yeah, so did I for nine years. And so like oh, wow. I do, yeah, black belt and karate and also pole dancing. So uh, my nickname was the pole ninja for a while. But um, <laughs> but yeah, like when you think of it that way, like, yeah, look at all the stuff that my body has accomplished. It's mm-hmm. yeah, got me through a lot. Yeah, girl. Kind of like I sometimes will pat myself like, yes, way to still be standing despite how many, you know, times <laughs> you've had crushed knees or whatever way to take pole dance classes because i'm totally down with that i think everybody every men and women i will say truthfully pole dancing did a huge had a a huge impact on my confidence Mm. because Mm. you feel sexy 
even when you don't in pole, being able to be more comfortable with your body is what pole dancing is all about to find the sensualness within, within you. I mean, I, I can't advocate enough. Well, I think this is a great way to wrap up the episode, but this was so insightful. Yeah. So thank you so much, Erin, for sharing so candidly with us. Yeah, this was great. And it makes me want to challenge every image I have in my head of how someone should look. The reason why Natalie Carey did pole dancing was because she's like, not, not every pole dancer needs to look that way, the what you're picturing in your head. So I challenge everyone to go out there and find something where you, you want to change the face of what that person is supposed to look like. I think it's a it's a great way to to get out of your comfort zone to try it. So it, another great way to get out of your co- comfort zone, actually, this should be in your comfort zone is to leave us a review <laughs> on Apple Podcasts. You know, we do love compliments as well. It goes a long way. <laughs> you can tell us we have beautiful hair or tell us our podcast is amazing. <laughs> And if you give us five stars, we will definitely swipe back on you. It's super simple. Apple Podcasts, simple like two-liner about why you love us and five stars. That's all we're asking for. And it really affords us the ability to get more fantastic guests like Aaron, who's who's willing to open up with us and um, continue and sustain our podcast. It's a big deal for all of us. So thank you those of you who've already done that. Shall we wrap this up? Stay, Stay Dateable! The Dateable Podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcast. Want to continue the conversation? First, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter with the handle at Dateable Podcast. Tag us in any post with the hashtag stay dateable and trust us, we look at all of those posts. Then head over to our website, datablepodcast.com. There you'll find all the episodes as well as articles, videos, and our coaching service with vetted industry experts. You can also find our premium Y series where we dissect, analyze, and offer solutions to some of the most common dating conundrums. We're also downloadable for free on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Overcast, Stitcher Radio, and other podcast platforms. Your feedback is valuable to us, so don't forget to leave us a review. And most importantly, remember to stay dateable.